Okay, so we've been talking about 2019, the new year, all our resolutions. But now we're saying have a new life resolution, not just a new year resolution. And I'm sure for you who is an entrepreneur, you will want to learn how that can happen for you. With us on the show today, we have an entrepreneur, a food business expert, an agriculturalist, and also he was a nominee in the just concluded 2018 Future Awards Africa, and he's here to share with us entrepreneurial skills for 2019. Please welcome Jesse Osiobe. Welcome, Jesse. Thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you, thank you so and much. And first of all, I'd like to say congratulations thank on you. your Future Award nomination. Yeah. Of all the young people in Africa doing phenomenal things, oh, yes. you were nominated. What category were you nominated for? Agriculture. Agriculture. Yeah. Agriculture, yes. Uh, okay. yeah, that, that, how did that make you feel? Well, I was, I was blown away because the point is, I wasn't expecting it anyway, because there are a lot of major people in the country basically doing our culture and to be picked about amongst everyone I was I was really I was really happy really happy so how long have you been doing this um officially 2015 that's about three yeah. four years ago now what's your what's your core area of focus in the actually we started with fish which is livestock so we do catfish which is like our major staple in every hotel every joint you go to any restaurant so wow. we actually started with catfish but in 2019 we'll be moving into other sectors which is poultry and a few other things but did you study this in school no i didn't please what did you study computer engineering yeah, well. so how did you wow. find yourself in the agricultural sector um through a friend and um then i was i was working in the oil and gas i was a contract staff in oil and gas so oh. actually once my free time i would actually head to his farm and see how i was going and I began to develop, although I know my dad was into it back then, so, but I began to develop interest in seeing how it was working. So I just had to, so I started literally when I was still working and I decided to pull out and just focus on it full time. All right, we know that the agricultural sector is one that has been said to be a major area we need, need to look into as a country in Nigeria. So we're going to ask you to share with us helpful tips. But before then, at the, in 2018, the second quarter GDP reports showed that there was a decline in the agricultural sector, mainly because of insecurity yeah. and all the other challenges. What are your projections for the agricultural sector in 2019? Um, for 2019, um, I feel the increase in production would actually go up because the point is the government is doing a lot right now. And for instance, as of yesterday, reports that came in was that our buying rate for rice has reduced all the way to about 20,000 tons of rice, meaning that a lot of production is actually coming in now. So since the government is putting a lot of ban into importation, so meaning that the gap has to be filled by we produce it. So if everyone gets in space and do what you're supposed to do, I think the, the agricultural sector will push the GDP high a bit. So I feel, I feel literally that we should actually think of what exactly can we do as young people to actually support the initiative of the government to say, okay, fine, this is what we can do as much as you're doing this. Because the point was, if why we were not doing much before was because import was coming in. We had to import rice, we had to import um, eggs, we had to import um, chicken, we had to import fish. Everything was being imported. So if we, they could stop that and put a ban on that, then local production can actually begin to increase, and that can actually have a good effect on the GDP. So does the government actually aid your business? No, not at all. Oh, wow. Not it's at all. solely funded by you. Yeah. Okay, so one thing is, there are young people who always say, yes, I would love to go into agriculture, or I've tried it before, but it's expensive, you know, to start up and run. Is that true? On two sides. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's not true. Let me say why. Because the point is, if you start a business, you have to start small. Every business starts small. So if you learn the ropes on small scale, you would know how to move into a bigger scale. What I mean is you have to start small, start the business, understand the business somehow. Might probably go to meet a mentor and study on that person and probably see how the person is running his business. The business can be a hundred million naira business, but you can be under that business and understand how it's been run. So when you want to actually venture into it, it won't be, you won't need that much because for you have the skill, you'll be able to find family and friends who will be able to sponsor or fund you and also look for probably grants and stuff like that can help you push. So I think, yes, it's expensive and culture, but you can start small. Okay. We're starting to hear a lot of young people as well 
talking about agriculture, I know a lawyer who quit a job in a law firm to go and start a farm. So we're seeing a lot of young people go into the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. My question is twofold. Do you think that the agricultural sector is um, over, overcrowded? And if not, what are the areas that young people can look into? You know, do we have too much of fish farmers? You know, what are the areas that you feel that more young people can explore? Okay. I, I don't think we have enough farmers yet because based on our population, we are, we're increasing on a daily basis. And there's a stat that says that by 20, 2050, it would be about 400 million in Nigeria. And that means that we need more people to begin to produce more food. So if we still have imports coming in, meaning that there's lack of production, because the point is, to be honest with you, if we shut our borders and say, okay, fine, no more importation on anything, we won't be self-sufficient. We don't have what it takes to produce what we can eat on our own selves. Mm. So the point is, how do we bring in people into this? Education is a very important thing to push people into. Yes, the business is there. But you have to understand entrepreneurship, factors of production, land, labor, capital. Those things are really important for every young person to say, okay, fine, I want to come into the cultural space. It's not overcrowded. There are many things people can do. We have rice, which is what we eat a lot. We have um, groundnuts. We have um, cassava. We have gari. We have yam. So there are several ways people can come into it. We're having issues with the headsman crisis and the uh, religious issues happening in the north, where most of all these are foodstuff come out from. And down south, we are too, most of us are too posh to go into farming. So most of the farming we get, the food products are coming from down from the north. So if there can be a collaboration, okay, the south is doing their best, the north is doing their best, the east are doing their best in the cultural space, I think we can go. I think as a follow-up to what you just said, we also find that some people who are going to the agricultural sector are not doing the work themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're st starting to see platforms that encourage people to invest yes. and then get returns after a few yeah. months. Yes. How advisable is that? Yes. Because so I just have like random 30K. I don't know what to do with my 30,000 naira. Mm -hmm. And I see this, pro this uh, a farmer, I invest, hoping that after three months I get returns on the 30,000. Yeah, what we did, well, that's, one of our, that's one of our business models, which we actually run at the farm cart. What we do is, because we, we, are not, we don't have the funding to actually push into agriculture, to actually increase production, because as you're trying to expand and scale up, you need more funds, a lot of funds actually push into it. So what we did was, okay, if I create a model where people who want to invest in farms, but don't want to leave their jobs, but they can actually part away with some amount of money to invest and help you expand. So what would you, okay, fine, let's create a platform. People invest, and we use that to expand the farms. We grow the produce, we sell, and when we want to share, we share profits both the investor, the company, and the farmer. So that's the kind of model we actually created. So it makes it easier for us to raise funds from the public. Brilliant. Instead of saying, okay, because a lot of people have slush funds that they keep in their account for probably, save about two months, three months, one year, two years. And it's okay, fine. Instead of you keeping that money, we c it can help us to help our country grow and actually produce more things for us. That's what I think we did. Okay, so still dealing on production of food. Um, how do you think uh, you can make all young farmers can actually make food more affordable for Nigerians come 2019? Because there have been issues of, you know, young farmers producing food, doing the whole nice packaging thing. And then you have people say, uh -uh, I have this amount of tomatoes going for 500 now. Meanwhile, I can just walk into the market and go and meet the Asikira and buy it for 300 now. How can food become more affordable? For the average Nigerian in 2019? Basically, impute is very important. Like, it's what you impute into your production that you actually get out. The reason why you see um, most, most farmers are being pressurized to sell at a very ridiculous amount because they know that they, we don't have proper storage facility. So, for instance, a farmer who is just harvesting his tomatoes knows that if he doesn't take that tomatoes in the next two, hours out of that place and sends it down to the market, he might have a very bad produce after spending a lot of money. So he might be pressurized by a probably a middleman to say, okay, fine, this is how much I can give you for this right now. I'm, I don't need it now, but let me pay for this right now. So but if we have proper infrastructure in place, our road networks are okay, we have good storage facility, and the, the farmer knows that if I impute this into it, I now get this back. And you know that he won't be pressurized to actually sell because whoever's going to sell at a high price knows what he has put into it. 
what transportation has gone into it, what storage facility has taken his market. So he knows that, okay, my, my target market will not be the low income earners. I, I know I've, I've done my processes properly. I'll take it to where I can, or probably do for exports, where they can pay better. So that's why there's a divide. You can, some places you see that foods are affordable, some places you see food are not affordable. Like probably down east or down north, foods. A lot cheaper. So you can't compare when you come down to down west, Lagos, or Gusti, and you imagine how much a basket of tomatoes is worth and how much it's worth in the north because of those little infrastructure. Because by the time you factor in how much it costs to transport these things from the north, of yeah. course, the person who's doing this has to make their own. That's why, that's well. why I think government has its own way where it's infrastructure, where we have the roads are properly done. Um, they, we have other means of transportation, Railway railways, transportation, of transportation. so exactly. people can move their goods easily and, and, quickly. and quickly. So oh. also, even you have to probably probably want to export your product, your your transit from um, your market to probably the ports and everything. Things are moved. Ease of business very is quickly. very fast, and right. I think things will actually come down over time. Thank you so much, Jesse, for Thank sharing you. your wealth of knowledge with us. In a few seconds, what would you say to a young person looking to come into the agricultural sector? Um, I think every young Nigerian has to understand that no matter what, you have to be patient. You need to be strong. You need to understand that the agribusiness is something that's for life. Because before time or when time began, everybody had to eat. Before we found oil, we had to eat. Before anything happened, we ha before we even got clothes, we had to eat. So the point is, food will always be an essential tool for us. So for anyone coming to agriculture, Understand that yes, you will make it to be fine, but at the long run, you have to be patient and walk your ropes, and everything will be fine at the end. All right, thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. No better way to really wrap up that conversation. Understand that patience is very important, in not just with the agricultural sector, in any business. Don't expect that everything will happen overnight. Be willing to put in the work and wait. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Happy New Year to all our viewers. Thank you to everybody behind the scenes who has made the show a success. We'll see you again Happy tomorrow. New Happy New Year. Thank you so much for joining Happy us, Jesse. Remember to follow me on social media at Olive MOD. You can follow Esther. Esther Wanko underscore official. And Jesse, how can they follow you? Yeah, you can follow me, Jesse Osiobe, on Instagram, then of Business Farm Cup NG. All right. Thank you so much for following us, guys. We'll see you again tomorrow, the second day of 2019. Bye. It's starting to, I'm not yet. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.